What's going on, everyone? Happy Monday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Monday edition of the Pandemic Update for Monday, February 26, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a threat to you. Plus, we give you tips on times on ways to stay safe and when it's actually safe to get something done. We're actually going to talk about that today to start off this pandemic update. So if you want to stay informed, by all means, subscribe to my channel down below. If you want to help keep others informed, by all means, share this with anyone you know. And of course, hit that thumbs up button. The more likes we get, the more the YouTube algorithm helps uh, share this video with other people. Alrighty, starting off today, before we get to everything here that I have set up for you, I've been telling you a lot lately that eh, now is not the time to, you know, go out to certain doctors or dentists, such as dentists, or other things right now because it's risky. However, there are exceptions to every rule. Unfortunately, I have to visit the dentist tomorrow. Now, I did have a COVID-safe dentist, but my insurance plan... I'm through the government insurance plan. They're no longer taking that dentist. So it's become a problem, and I had to find another dentist. Well, it turns out I'm going back to a dentist I went to a few years ago. Is it the most safest dentist in the world for COVID-wise? Not, but hey, this is a dental emergency. I'm having tooth pain up here. So tomorrow at 1130, I'm going to hopefully have it taken care of without getting infected. Wish me luck. All right, let's get into today's update. And we start off today with New Zealand, which is reporting 6,084 new cases and 20 deaths. I do believe that is down ever so slightly from the previous week. Then we have to come back to the United States with just this. This is just totally ridiculous. Remember, we've been talking about the measles outbreaks and Florida has been popping up a lot. Well, Florida, this should be no surprise. Florida is continuing to grow out of control at this point. Florida measles cases continue to rise. New case reported in a second county. That is Polk County, Florida, which is up in central Florida. And there are now, I believe in Boward County, is now up to eight cases. So that makes nine cases total. And you're probably thinking, oh, well, that's not a lot of cases. Okay, it's not, but I say it's going out of control for a reason. This only started just over a week ago, and already it's up to nine cases. And it's likely going to continue because the Florida Surgeon General says, well, well, you don't need to quarantine. You don't need to do anything special. If you get measles, you're fine. Yeah, freedoms and liberties. They're taking it a little too far, and this is interfering with people's safety and their health. Please, if you have had contact with someone with measles, or if you currently have measles, stay home. Seek health care. Do not go out and spread it to other people. Do not do what the Florida Surgeon General is telling you to do. He is in the wrong here. Okay? Within this article, I found something very interesting. Measles cases by state. This is from FloridaToday.com. What they did here is they have set up a map which shows you where all the cases have been. For example, my state of Pennsylvania has had some cases in uh, the Philadelphia area. Haven't heard an update on that recently. Looks like uh, Minnesota has had cases. We've reported on that. Missouri has had cases. Louisiana, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan. New York State has had cases. Don't think we've done any New York State stories. Uh, Maryland has had cases. Delaware, Virginia. Look at this. Arizona, California. Washington, Georgia, and so on. It's in a lot of uh, states. And it would not surprise me if two, three months from now, we see this fill in with every state. Maybe the last one would be Vermont. Because I do believe back when we had the MPOX outbreak back in 2022, I think Vermont was the last state. Point is, it's spreading. And Florida, which a lot of people go to Florida in the wintertime because it's warmer weather. Florida is not helping a cause whatsoever. All right, moving on. This I thought was interesting. This was tweeted out by Meet Jess, a wonderful person on Twitter. If you don't follow the account, it's at Meet Jess. You want to follow that account. And this is very interesting to me. This has to do with Taylor Swift. Strict measures are put into place to stop her from interacting with anyone outside of her bubble. Even those in her bubble, including dancers, managers, are restricted in what they can do and where they can do can go during downtime. Very odd. So it sounds to me like she takes things very seriously with COVID. Add in that fact that her boyfriend, 
Travis Kelsey, did a commercial on the COVID vaccine. So he's very big on COVID. She's very big on COVID. I just thought that was very interesting. Leave your opinion or comment about that down below. It just goes to show you there are some celebrities out there, some big names out there that know that this is a big deal and uh, they still take this relatively seriously. However, even with this being said, she's going. she went to the Super Bowl. She's been to several football games with the large crowds of people. I mean, she did have to, I guess, somehow come in contact. So, like, for example, when they, the uh, Super Bowl, when they presented the Super Bowl itself, when, you know, when Kansas City won, she was down there on the field. There were a lot of people there on the field. But, hey, the fact she still takes things seriously. That's rather interesting to me. Wonder what's actually going on there. All right, taking a look at this. BNO, new cases. It's that time of the week again. We bring out our calculator. New cases, 187,416. That's down. The average is 222,304. That's down by 15,000. States reporting, 50 out of 50. In the hospital, 16,786. In the ICU, it is 1,907. That's down by 83. New deaths. So new deaths this week are at 1,569, and the average is down to 2,062. That's down by 252. Remember that new death number. We're going to add that to the flu number in just a moment. The breakdown for this week's cases is 22 states reported. Estimates come from 28 states. COVID cases are down from the winter's peak, but remain elevated though gradually decreasing in a majority of the U.S. states, deaths remain elevated. During the past week, nearly 19,000 Americans were hospitalized with COVID, down 5% from the week before. Nearly 17,000 people are currently hospitalized. This is the 24th week in a row with more than 1,000 new deaths, or nearly 41,000 during the same period. So far this year, yikes, this is not good. And these are just reported cases, remember now. A lot of cases do not get reported, such as these at-home tests or people that do not bother to test whatsoever. So far this year, more than 2.2 million cases of COVID-19 have been recorded in the U.S., causing 175,000 hospitalizations and more than 17,000 deaths. All right, let's add that death number now to the flu update. New cases, 1 million, that's a lot of flu cases. One uh, average is down by 250,000, that the average is 1.7 million, just over that, but that's going to continue to drop. Hospital admissions, 20,000. New deaths, 1,000. So let's add that to our COVID number, and we get, yet again, another 2,569 people died of flu and COVID in the past week, not including RSV and any other miscellaneous airborne respiratory virus. That is still a very unacceptable level. Seasonable flu, why elevated, has gradually decreased uh, from declined from the winter's peak. Some states, especially northeast and midwest, did report increases in the past few weeks. So far this season, the estimates are 25 million people have been infected with influenza. All right, we have to talk about air quality. This is very important. We're actually going to take an extra step today when talking about air quality. Across the United States, there are some areas that are having some bad air qualities, and that would be generally from Texas, Oklahoma, and on eastward. You can see all this bad air quality. There's a reason for that. Let's take a look now at our extra step today. Well, first part of the extra step. There are some wildfires that are ongoing in Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri, and even portions of Iowa. A lot of smoke's being, you know, put into the atmosphere. Well, there's a southwest flow that is setting up, and with that southwest flow, the wind, it's spreading that smoke more to the northeast. Could cause some bad air qualities over the next several days. This is a model. Now, I usually save models for my other channel where I talk about climate. This is important that you see this. This is called the RAP smoke model. And what that does is we can actually see where smoke is projected to go. So we're going to take a look at this run from the model. See where it's showing the smoke here, you know, at near the surface? Let's go back here for a second. Look where the bad air quality is. The yellows, you're seeing some reds pop up. Look where it's at here. It's doing a pretty good job. And if we advance it to right about now, we're right about here right now in terms of time. Take a look at this. You can see it's going to spread more to the north. Uh, places like Pennsylvania, Ohio Valley, West Virginia, Virginia, 
you're going to be dealing with these issues. Even Washington, D.C., as we head into tomorrow, you're going to be dealing with some issues as well. So be mindful. You could deal with some bad air quality over the next day, maybe even in the portions of Wednesday as well. And if you're going to go outside, I hate to say this, a lot of people don't like this word. Yes, you need to mask up outside, not just indoor spaces. Next couple days, mask up outside and make sure you have your air purifiers running inside your house. You can see, even on Wednesday, that's still in existence here. So if you live in any of these, like Nashville, Tennessee, Louisville, Kentucky, Philadelphia, all those places, be mindful. The next couple days could be unusually bad air quality for winter standards. If you want to see my stuff from my other channel, it's at Climate Data Report. There'll be a link to it down below. We haven't done a video since Saturday. I don't know that we're going to do one today. I hope to get one in at some point this week. All right, taking a look now, Philadelphia. This is really good news. Philadelphia only had 663 EMS incidents yesterday. Yes, that is the lowest number. I know we went into the 600 a couple times. I don't recall going this low. This is some really good news. Hopefully, they can stay low. This is some of the lowest levels of the entire pandemic for Philadelphia. Montgomery County, not having a case of the Mondays. It was a little busy earlier, but right now it is not that busy. How about Chester County, Pennsylvania? And I do have to refresh this. Uh, we do see a few calls, sick person, sick person, a couple strokes, respiratory difficulty, heart problems. A little bit busier in Chester County, but again, not terrible. All right, let's take a look at a few wastewater sites around the country. How about we come down here near Washington, D.C., Blue Plains, big wastewater site, 2 million people serviced. You can see here, February was going up a little bit, then it went down. Most recent update is up ever so slightly. And then RSV at this time is high and rising ever so slightly. Influenza A is rising slightly. Influenza B, it still may remains high. And yes, it is rising at this time. Norovirus, it's continuing to rise at this time. HMPV is low, but rising ever so slightly. Some hepatitis A detection and no MPOX detection today. Let's do one more wastewater site. Then we have to take a look at Walgreens. Some bad news out of Walgreens today. Yeah, you may not like to see. Let's do Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, you might not like the Walgreens update today. I'll explain in a moment. Memphis, Tennessee. Hi, but you can see they're, they're just basically flat. They're at the similar level as to where they were in January. They would go up a little bit, then down, then up a little bit, and now they have flattened out. Taking a look at RSV here, low at this time. Influenza A is high, but it has been dropping. Same with influenza B. It's high, but dropping. Norovirus is dropping at this time. And HMPV, unfortunately, it is... Uh, rising a bit, but it does remain low, so it's not a terrible thing at this time. Mbox is low. All right, now the bad Walgreens news. Right off the bat, you're probably thinking, well, wait a second, there's a lot of green on the map. That there is. Green is a good thing. There's also a lot of white on the map. White are states that did not report. You see Oregon here, nothing. Nevada, Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, Maine, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and even including Georgia and Alaska and Hawaii. All did not report this week. So that makes for some changes here. The positivity rate, 17.3%. That is down by 7%. That's a huge decrease. Prior week was 24.2%. However, look at total tests. Just 3,047. The prior week was 15,476. A bigger reason for the testing being down is the number of states. It's way down. And plus, states that did report are not reporting all that many tests. Look at this. Ohio, 73 tests versus 372. But again, the positivity went down significantly. It was 9.6% versus 18.5%, down by 9%. So, I mean, that is, it's good news to see the positivity rate dropping. With such a decrease in testing nationally, it is actually very good news to see the positivity rate uh, decreasing. But it's bad that we don't have all these states that just decide to, I don't know, not a uh, report or just not no one getting tested at Walgreens. I find it very hard to believe a state like Massachusetts, no one got tested at Walgreens. Or maybe it's just not enough data that they didn't bother updating it. All right, taking a look here. Arkansas, though, they you are rising. Your testing is down, but you are rising. 15.2%. The prior week was 13.3%. Difference of 1.8% up. 66 tests versus 210. No doubt 
that is testing. Let's check Colorado. Yeah, Colorado is testing as well. 24% versus 20.4%. Difference of up, 3.6%. 25 tests versus 230. That's a significant decrease in testing, which is why your positivity rate rose. All right, let's take a look at some other data here. See, epidemic status. Yeah, it's still growing for COVID in some places. It's declining in others. Same deal with influenza at this time. And now let's take a look at influenza. Very high levels in Ohio. Very high levels in New Mexico. Still high levels in Texas. California, you're minimal at this time. Vermont is also minimal. Low in Pennsylvania. Florida is moderate at this time. Wyoming, very high. Montana is minimal at this time. Washington is low. Georgia is still coming in with high levels there. Illinois, if this is where you live, low levels for you for influenza. And you get the picture. Still a mixed picture. The places that rose were in the north, and down in the south, they dropped some, which is basically right in line with what BNO was saying. All right, let's take a look at New Jersey. I have to refresh this. I think this is the up-to-date number, but let's refresh it to be sure. And if it is the up-to-date number, unfortunately, yeah, it is. A lot of hospitals, uh, 11 of them did not report. They still have 510 hospitalizations, 26 on a ventilator. This is all under count. 68 people in the ICU. Discharges, uh, 68 discharges at this time. New York State, I have to refresh this. Let's see what happens. And New York State, 1,111 new cases, and how about hospitalizations? Let's see what the deal is with that. Refreshing it, and we're going to zoom in to see what today's numbers are, and they're dropping. It is 1,278 people hospitalized, 159 people in the ICU. Alrighty, that does it for today's pandemic update. As I said earlier, I actually have to go out and use healthcare tomorrow. I have to go to a dentist tomorrow. Not looking forward to it. It's really, I mean, if you have to get something done right now, some areas I think it may be starting to enter a time period where it may get safer. Probably best off to wait a few weeks, but if you're in a situation like I am where you need emergency dental work, what can you do? You have to get it done. All right, hopefully you enjoyed today's update. Hopefully we'll have another update again tomorrow. I'll share with you my experience and everything of what happened. And if you enjoyed this update, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below. Share this with anyone you know. Ways to support the channel are listed down below. I will see you guys all again tomorrow. Until I see you again tomorrow, stay safe everyone. I know I'll try to. And have a fantastic Monday evening. Thanks for watching.